Hello, um, and welcome to our weekly discussion uh, on why Black Lives Matter. Uh, and today, I want to bring up a topic that um, really I, I began healing this week. Uh, last week, when in the last discussion, I think we brought up something about Black people uh, having um, a misaligned belief about, um, I guess, po police and authority in general. And I think it's no coincidence that I, I was hearing uh, things about power and authority this week. And I think that's something that the collective has experienced as well. So um, it's important to, to speak about it. Um, how, is, how it was brought up for me was not through racism or police, but I guess like the abuse of power that I experienced um, from all the people when I was a child and that um, basically made me think that um, power, being powerful and having authority was being a, a tyrant um, and dumping on people, abusing people. And yeah, I think there is something to, to look up um, here and especially for people of color because this is something that they experience repeatedly um, with like um, the law and order in different societies. So I don't know what you guys think and feel about this topic. Uh, I would like to, to hear what you have to say. Yeah, so I want to kind of just carry on on the track that you've kind of introduced in terms of just what power is and how we've experienced the use and also the abuse of power and why it sometimes kind of makes people not want to accept their own power because they almost have the sense that they then will also play in that space of kind of abusing or misusing their power. And so it's two sides of the coin is that we've seen it and so we don't want it, but then we've also seen it when, and we don't accept that in our own right we're powerful and we don't have to play out the same pattern. Which is always, it's, it's always something that kind of needs to come into your awareness because your power shouldn't hurt you in the first place. And if it doesn't hurt you in the first place, it's highly unlikely that you're going to use it in a way that hurts your brother or your sister because you understand the core of it and you understand the strength of it. And you also understand that actually you display your power from a place of peace. You don't display your power from a place of aggression or animosity or even suppressing or oppressing somebody else. Which is which which the perspective then scares people when they see that because they're like, well, I'm not cut out for leadership because I might do the same thing. Well, actually, the fact that you it's even in your awareness that you don't want to do the same thing is already putting you in a powerful position and in a place to use it in a different way. Yeah, I want to mention like uh, towards the end of the week, uh, I had some decision to make as a leader of one of the team in the Church of Union. And I had this fear coming up um, pretty often, like, oh my gosh, what if 
I'm abusing them? What, what if I'm dipping on them? What if I'm doing uh, the exact same thing that um, the people that abused me did in the past? And basically after that, I, I, I took the time to, to, um, to have a discussion uh, with the people of my team and they were like, oh, there's absolutely no problem. Like we're healing, we're doing pretty great. And you're absolutely not dumping on us. And that kind of reassured me. And then I had a discussion with um, Chrissy about leadership and Adam and Brianne. And yeah, basically, that's where, when I, and it really solidified in me that I was not doing the, I was not making the choice to abuse people. And that being powerful didn't mean um, that I was being mean or bad. And that basically power equals love. And therefore true power can cannot abuse uh, other people. And yeah, like for all the black people out there, um, whenever you are watching this, like I just want uh, to tell you that um, you don't have to be afraid of power. You don't have to be afraid of the power of other people. You don't have to feel threatened by it. And also you don't have to be afraid of your own power. And the way to overcome, overcome the, the past hurts uh, that we had as a community is by claiming our power. So this is just a way and it is compassionate to, to be powerful. I just want to add, like, for those that might not understand, like, might be watching this for the first time or not really knowing a lot about Jeff and Julia's teachings or unionism. Um, when Yurene says claiming your power, what that means is simply, like, you know, within yourself, like, recognizing that you have the power in that situation, right? And so if you come across a situation where someone is, you know, um, you know, trying to step over your boundaries or something like that, that you're firm, that you're firm in your decision, you're firm in your, um, in your stance. And, and it doesn't have to be from a place of aggression or anger. Um, it can still be from a place of compassion, um, but you can still hold um, a strong boundary. Um, that's an example of claiming your power. Um, and again, it, it like I said, it, it can just simply be you saying that within yourself, recognizing that you are powerful and just feeling that in your heart, right? Um, that, that's kind of like just to, just to, for the people who don't really understand what that means or what that looks like. If, if anyone else has another example or wants to riff off that, um, I think there's, there's something here to help those that might be new on understanding that deeper. Well, um, this made me think of like, I've been working through the same thing too this week. Like, um, and I was realizing I was like leaking my power to people, like just anyone. <laughs> like, and um, basically like that means like, I'm thinking that they're more powerful than I am. And that's just not true. So like, yeah, like I, been working on just like claiming okay like we're all powerful we're all one child of god we're just like there's no no like more powerful person over here um and yeah that felt really good um to like claim my power back in that way and and not like get attached to people's upsets like people will be upset with you or like it's just it's really they're upset with themselves and um you can't really uh like it, if you feed that, they will like go more into it. Like they'll, they'll like 
see that you're giving power to their upset and be like, oh, okay, they, they, they want me to keep on doing this. So I'm going to keep on getting more and more upset. Um, but when you're holding your peace and you're holding like your power and you're like, I, <laughs> I'm good. I don't want to be in this thing that you're trying to pull me into. Um, uh, that like, they can't, they can't like pull you into that. Like, cause you're not letting them. Um, and it, yeah, it just reminded me of like this video Jeff shared a little bit ago um, about like bullies and like, I don't know if you guys see it, saw it, but like basically the bully was like trying to get this guy, like just like trying to like throw these digs at him and stuff. And um, he just didn't let the bully have the power. Um, so he's like, okay. <laughs> and then like the bully saw like, he wasn't going to get anything or she wasn't going to get anything from him by like continuing to choose this abuse because he wasn't going to choose that. So, um, yeah, I, that's been really helpful lately. And it's a really important lesson to like, just like know like that you have the power to make that choice and that you're very, very powerful and you can always have your peace. Yeah, and for me, you know what, it, it plays out in the sense of where somebody gives you a gift and you don't accept the gift. Or somebody gives you a, an, an invite to a party. Might not be a good party, but they're still giving you an invite to something. And so you have a choice not to accept the invitation. And that's actually where your power lies. Your power lies in your choice. And if your choice is peaceful and you're making it from a place of peace and you're refusing because you know like and I, i'm going to just use it in the way that we've used it in the but the friends and i've used it in the past and it's just like resigning from the bullshit business you know and i think that's that's really the sense of it it's like what deji said about trump's son carrying on on various platforms and it was just like Actually, the, the upset is yours. You crack on. You crack on with the crazy. You choose the insanity. And we're going to stand on the sideline and love you from a distance. <laughs> because that's sometimes what you actually need to do. Is to love from a distance. And not participate. And not accept the invitation. And not sit in the energy even if you have accepted the invitation. That's how we heal it. That's how we choose to understand that in our own right, our peace makes us powerful. Not the exercise of aggression, not the exercise of pushing people away, not the exercise of being one up on somebody or winning in a conflict or any of those things. It's the place of actually I'm peaceful and in my peace, I need to set this boundary. So discipline is also powerful if you're doing it from a place of peace. Crazy thing is he caught COVID as well. So he's taking his punishment, quote unquote. His discipline. And that's where yeah, I think- He's we... taking his discipline. <laughs> yeah, and, but you know what? I'm glad that you brought that up because I feel like that's something that we still are healing as a consciousness mm -hmm. is recognizing the difference between discipline and punishment, right? Um, because a lot of the times people will see that as the same thing. Like discipline is like, the way that I perceive discipline at least is, you know, um, if a teacher is uh, at the, the, the class in the front of the classroom and it's telling the students to be quiet so that the rest of the students can learn right that's like that's that's helping them right that's benefiting them because then they're able to actually sit and learn or if a student you know does one plus one and says it's three and the teacher disciplines them and is like no it's two and here's why right like that's helping that student that's benefiting that student abuse would be um the student is doing nothing wrong. It's just sitting there quietly doing their work and the teacher just slaps them, right? And the teacher says that they don't like the way they look, right? 
that's abuse. That's not discipline. It doesn't benefit mm-hmm. the that's punishment. That's uh that's uh, not benefiting the person. Um, and you know, with discipline too, and like you know, we we discipline each other all the time in this community. And stage of just disciplined me just now, right? Like it's it's helping um, each of us to become better. And it's, it's, it's redirecting or correcting to help a person to be the better version of themselves. And the thing that happens when you discipline someone is to hold compassion, right? And that was what grandpa was talking about is, are you coming from a place of peace? When you come from a place of peace, the other person on the other side and the receiving end can feel that and, you know, sometimes it might mean to just be present with them and help them through that discipline. Maybe that's guiding them through an upset or whatever the case may be, whatever, whatever you're called to, right? Whatever the situation is, but we're all supporting and helping each other. And that's what this discipline is. There's no need to be afraid of that. So when we look at police officers, for example, they're trying to have everybody uphold a law. That's the, that's the goal, right, of why we have police officers. Whether that ends up happening or not is to be, is to be you know, looked at, right? And we're, we're disciplining in certain areas around the country um, within the Black Lives Matter movement to make sure that those things are happening. But the purpose of the police officer is to discipline. And if you're afraid of discipline because you believe that it's punishment, then that is what you're you're going to probably likely uh, attract that kind of experience, right? And so it's really important for us as a collective and in this in this group um, to heal that, you know, to recognize the difference between that. Am I being disciplined? Am I pun? Am I being punished? Is this abuse or is this love? Right. Because if it is true discipline, it would not be abuse and it would not be punishment. So I'm not, I'm not sure if anybody has any experience with this where they've actually been abused or they have been punished or you know have had some sort of discipline that didn't feel good or has an upset there, but maybe we can have some, some healing or dialogue further in regards to that. Yeah, um, I have noticed that like, with discipline, um, a lot of the times they're just shining light in a place of my awareness that I'm unwilling to look at. Um, and it's just this, a lot of the times, uh, at first I was feeling I, I was being attacked. And when they were showing me that they were just disciplining me and loving me, they would always come from an energy of like, no, this is what you're doing. Does it feel good? No, it doesn't. It's like, okay, then this is what needs to shift. This is what we need to look at. With punishment, there's usually no communication whatsoever. They just go to like straight, like you did this and this is your punishment. This is what you have to do. Like I didn't know like as a child, uh, sometimes I would be punished and I didn't understand what got me to this place. Discipline would have helped me understand how I got myself into this place and what I need to shift punishment is this is what you did and now you get to go stand in time out or you're going to spank in and we're not going to communicate about it and so it was always coming from a place of like I didn't know how to um, change the pattern I just knew how to sit in the pattern and keep <laughs> keep receiving the punishment um, but with discipline they help you shift out of the pattern is what is happening and so um, to be able to see the difference now I'm actually able to really receive discipline and humble myself and change the pattern very easily. Um, and it feels so much better than um, not being clear on even how I got there or why I'm there or what the pattern is in general. It, there's, there's a different level of communication with discipline than there is with punishment. I, I actually am, you know, as you were saying that I was like thinking about like, you know, if, if there were a police officer watching this, um, how much benefit they would receive from from hearing what you're saying too. Like, and this goes for anyone, right? Um, when you're in a situation um, to, to like figure out, am I punishing someone or am I disciplining them? Um, you can clearly say, am I benefiting them in them some way? Like, does this benefit them? Like, how does this help them? Hmm. Am I giving them an opportunity to make a new choice? 
because that's really all it is. You're inviting them into making a new choice when you discipline someone. And if they're not making a new choice, that's when, you know, you, you make a bound, you put a boundary up and that might look like punishment of some kind in terms of like, you know, the boundary is you're going to jail because you didn't make a new choice. Right. Or whatever the case may be. Mm -hmm. Um, but, uh, yeah, it's interesting to like have this new perspective. Um, and I, I'd be really interested at some point to hear from people who maybe have worked in the <laughs> police force and what they'd think about that perspective, because, um, it's, it's eye awakening from eye opening for me, um, to, to like get that clarity as to like, what does that look like? Discipline versus, you know, tyrancy versus, uh, peace, like a peaceful leadership and things like that. Yeah. So this conversation, um, just kind of as everyone's been speaking, brings to mind like my last interaction with the police. Um, and so I would kind of just invite us to all think about like, what was your last interaction? If you've never had an interaction, I'd love to hear that. Um, but also, you know, what was your last interaction with the police? And so, um, you know, um, I'm a little heavy on the, the gas a little bit. Um, and so back in my college years, I usually got pulled over a lot driving from college home for the holidays and the breaks um, for speeding. Um, and if I just think about my experiences back then and like the world right now, um, man, that would suck. It probably would have had me to think about how I, would, I was speeding for sure, but the tickets were enough, right? And so I got set free and, and the Lord set me free and I have not gotten a speeding ticket in Lord knows how long. Um, but recently um, I did have an interaction with the police and it was because I had to use the bathroom and there was no parking spaces in this place. We were at the beach and put some friends and I and there was no parking spaces and I had to use this bathroom. So I I pulled my car into like the, the crosswalk um, where people are really supposed to be walking, right? Cars are not supposed to be there. And um, ran in, I gave my friends the keys. And I was like, you know, move it if you need to. And like, I had to go to use the bathroom, ran in. As I was coming out, the police, a, a bike police, so the police was on a bike, um, was at the car and like, you know, asking for my friend's um, driver's license and about to give us a ticket. And, and so my friend was already in the driver's seat and the police officer was like, you know, what, what's going on? I was like, you know, I'm sorry, officer. And so at first I approached him, like I thought he was my be best friend or something. And he was very like aggressive with me, not very aggressive, but he was like, you know, get get away essentially like he didn't know who I was because I was approaching the car and so I went in I was like let me be obedient let me go inside this car right um and sit down and he was like I was like I'm sorry officer really needed to use the restroom um you know we're moving it like right we're moving the car and he's like well you know you're not supposed to be in a crosswalk and you know you it, you it whatever he's whatever he said and he was like, was the bathroom worth, a, I think it was like $80 ticket or something like that. He was like, was the bathroom worth an $80 ticket? And I was like, yeah, like, like I really had to use the bathroom. <laughs> and um, and to, it, we were in Florida and tickets in Florida is not fun. Um, anyways, fast forward, he, he said, um, he let us go, right? He let us go and he said, you know, you're not supposed to park here, you're not supposed to be in this, in this area. Anyways, I say all that story to say that that was, I, I think a punishment would have been giving me the ticket and discipline is what he chose. And he didn't leave, you know, he didn't, um, he didn't leave without like giving me his two cents about the fact that I didn't need to be there and that this is for crosswalk for people and cars aren't supposed to be there. And I just really think that the consciousness that's happening right now is what made him make that choice. He's a bike police. Like he probably thrives on like giving these types of tickets. I don't know. Like, I don't know what else he gets to do, right? <laughs> um, and so I, it, that was a, a sense of gratitude, but how did I respond? I was respectful. 
Um, I, I, you know, he wanted me to get into the car to make sure that everything was cool. And I responded in that way. And so um, I guess I'm just thankful for that interaction, even in this consciousness. And so I don't know, I think a good way to just really talk through this is um, to just think about our last reaction interactions with the police officer and what feelings came from that. Um, or if it's not the last one, one that is in your mind or whatever. But yeah. I don't know if that was entertaining or not, but. <laughs> <laughs> it was. So, yeah, so, I, so what I wanted to check with you, is like, is there a residual feeling there? Are you comfortable that you are at peace in that space? Yeah, I was, I was it was a lot of gratitude for, um, for how he handled the situation. Um, but I, I think any interaction with the police, though, you know, there's a nervous feeling um you know about being in police presence if you will um when you're being accused or questioned about something and so yeah i don't know if there's there's healing around the, what that nervousness is but there's a there's a nervousness naturally yeah there's so. absolutely an opportunity to heal around that nervousness because what you will find is that the anxiety energy in that nervousness is an energy leak and mm. so it's possibly not a, not a recognizing that you are a peaceful being and that actually you cannot be abused mm. So yeah. do you want to feel into that space and see if that resonates, if there's a feeling that comes up for you? Mm. Um, I mean, as at the end of the interaction, I was no longer, you know, by the, by the time the, the interaction ended, I was no longer nervous. But yeah, there was definitely this feeling of like, oh, shoot, I'm about to get in trouble. <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> um. Yeah, so, and in that feeling of, oh, shit, I'm going to get into trouble, did you realize, did you recognize that actually your choice in that space is what led you there? And so you could, you could, and you could have then made a new choice, a different choice, and you can always make a different choice. Yeah. Um, so, mm -hmm. So do you want to feel into the space where actually your choice is quite powerful, regardless of the consequences? Mm. And how you're a powerful being in that space and therefore it's quite responsible to make healthy choices for yourself. Yeah. I don't, I don't think I realized I was doing that in that moment, but I, I feel like the answer of like, I would have still done that to go to the bathroom <laughs> was me being like, um, you know, not disrespectful or anything like that, but like just really claiming the, that, that power within the situation of like this, you know? Um, and so I, I don't know that I recognize that though, but yeah. You don't know that you recognize? Say it again. What don't you recognize? I don't know that I recognize that power then that I, ah. that I, I kind of was, I was exhibiting at that moment. Um, mm. But do yeah. you realize your power now? Do you recognize it now? I do. And that your power could play mm -hmm. out very well, or it could play out in not so good right away. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. What does that bring up for you? Got, but that God dog, I'm powerful. <laughs> <laughs> But, and this is and this is the thing. This is the thing about being a peaceful, powerful being mm -hmm. that we sometimes also forget that our the reflection of what's happening externally is the projection of what we are giving externally. Mm. That's good. So if you give nervous energy, you frazzle the situation and you become frazzled because of it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and that's why it's it's kind of always good to reaffirm your choice to be in your peace yeah mm. 
And the thing that I, that a lesson that I, and a trick that I learned from Chrissy just in this past volunteer meeting was to actually just scan every part of your life and feel where your peace is not actually stable. Mm. So it's not just in healing the upset, it's in healing every single component in your life through finding the peace of healing that upset. Right. Yeah. So, it, so if, you, if you felt into it, where would you say you could possibly s- create a better foundation of peace in other areas of your life? Mm. Being, being responsible, um, what ended up happening was I didn't have, I didn't have my license. Um, I had lost my license months before. And so like, if he had actually asked me for my license, he probably would have gave us a ticket because like, I had no license. Um, but, um, and so just being responsible for my actions and um, how my actions can affect others. Um, Cause my friends then gave me discipline. It was like, so, um, so yeah, just a piece and just being responsible for um, my own actions. Mm. And, then and then I'm even only that, responsible for that. Yeah, and even in that discipline that you received from your friends, mm-hmm. did you feel peaceful in that space? Um, I felt peaceful receiving it. Um, but it, it like it did suck to receive it, right? <laughs> <laughs> it was like, yeah, I should I should not be driving with my license, right? Um, mm. that, but that's what they say. They're like um, doctors. They like the the illest, um, you know, police officers abuse authority. Um, who knows? And then lawyers be like break the law. No, but. <laughs> Okay, can we let go of the stereotypes and just Hi, be right. the peaceful divine child of God that you are? Right. So, I mean, at the time it felt peaceful to receive it for sure. But like, you know, just um, the reality of receiving it is like, okay, um, that won't happen again. Mm. Right. And, and, isn't, and isn't that like the purpose of discipline, as Ray said, is just like, it's inviting you to make a new choice. Mm-hmm. And it's an inviting, yeah. it's inviting you to reaffirm your choices often. Right. But it's also inviting you to understand that discipline plays out in different ways. <coughs> and it doesn't necessarily, even in punishment sometimes, there may be discipline. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I think that, that and I think that's the piece that we bring with our conversation today around healing our relationship with authority. Because we have had those situations where people in authority may have looked like they're punishing us, but it wasn't actually punishment. It was actually discipline. Right. And that's why the, the healthy part of it was how Kanisha kind of showed a dichotomy of the two. That where there's communication and you are given the opportunity to make a new choice and kind of heal the pattern. Mm-hmm. It's healthier than kind of intrinsically building a space of punishment and living in that energy of punishment. Yeah. Because you actually don't, with punishment, you don't, know, you don't actually know how to fix it. Whereas with discipline, you may, you, you, discipline would be somebody saying to you, this wasn't the best way to do it. Mm-hmm. You could have probably done it in this way. I might not have liked it, but I might have been more accepting of it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so you have the opportunity to assimilate information that helps you to show up in a more healthy way. Yeah. Mm. Mm. So are you feeling about your running with the police now? Um, Much, much, much more clear, much, much clearer and peaceful with the interaction. Um, I think before it was just like, oh, I, I got away from a ticket, but um, just really, yeah, just a little bit more peace and clarity mm. about it. 
Hmm, that feels good. Ray, I know you were going to say something before I started talking, so I'm not sure if you still you have a piece You said everything. There. No, you said everything I would. Um, the only other thing we, what, there's, there was maybe something. Um, I feel like, yes, here it is. So I feel like the reason why we're afraid of responsibility, which is what Kalita brought us to, um, is because we feel powerless and we feel like we're bad. Um, so by being disciplined, you think, okay, well, I'm powerless. I didn't know any better. And I'm, 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 and then like, you know, I, I'm actually really bad and I'm a bad person or whatever. Right. Like I've experienced this <laughs> and I've recognized it in others too. And like, you know, the, the truth is, is that you're not bad. You're a perfect divine child of God. And, um, yeah, we have free will. Yeah. We can certainly make choices that are not in alignment with our best and highest good for sure. Um, and when we receive that discipline, it's important to take responsibility so that we can choose our highest good. Mm -hmm. Right. And it, it doesn't mean that like, oh, I did something wrong or I did something bad because I'm not choosing my highest good. You don't have to think about it that way. I invite you to make a new perspective and in, in seeing as, I'm a human being and I'm mastering and learning how to be uh, more divine, mm -hmm. more myself, right? And um, claiming more of my divinity. And that's really all it is, is that you're just accepting that you're a divine child of God. Every time you accept responsibility and you move forward with that responsibility and you make a new choice that's in alignment with your highest good, you're just saying, I claim my divinity. I am a divine child of God. I am perfect, right? And it's coming into that perfection. That's really what is happening. And so you can see it as a, some, some of the, I was like healing alongside of Kalita a little bit. <laughs> and like one of the things that came up for me was like, I just feel grateful to someone who would take the time to really love me in that way and discipline me mm -hmm. um, and help me to be my highest good and be better, right? and claim my divinity invite me into that space right you know we all make mistakes we do that's okay we yeah. learn from them exactly yeah. yeah and 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 i think that's kind of that's the kind of next piece that as a child when you're being disciplined it does reinforce almost that sense of i am bad i am not enough i am not good enough and that is what makes the relationship with authority and discipline such a messy space. Because as a child, you interpret it in a different way to as an adult. As an adult, you will understand that there's an opportunity to make a new choice. As a child, if I'm being disciplined, it means I'm being bad. It means something's wrong with me. And so that is quite a bit of what happens with kind of healing that childhood stuff, because you do start to see it from a different perspective, but a child's mind doesn't see it that way. And that's why disciplining children always has to be a lot more loving. It just has to be a lot more loving because also what, what you're actually instilling is love more than you're instilling anything else. They come from a place of love, but they interpret things differently. You know what, I and you know, I'm, I'm, I love what you guys are saying too, because like, I think I think the reason why with children and, and Kanisha, you should say what you're probably gonna say afterwards, because I know you have kids. Um, it's because of the fact that like, kids don't understand the concept that like your behavior is your behavior and you are you. And so like, you know, I can say to the child, you're behaving badly. You're making choices that are not going to, that aren't serving you, right? That doesn't mean that you child are bad. It means that the, the choices and the things that you're doing are bad. And so sometimes it's, it's helping, you know, people or children understand that there is a, a difference here right there is there's this there's um it, you you are not your upsets your upsets are things that you're moving through right 
So anyway, Kanisha, you say what you were going to say. Um, yeah, so one of the things, and it correlates with uh, Kalita and back to the seating, <laughs> but um, I know like with my children, especially my youngest, he likes to do things um, that he knows he's not supposed to do. And so just this morning, I had to discipline him and I asked him to go to the corner, like, okay, you know, you're not supposed to be doing that. Where do we go next? And he was like, the corner. And I'm like, okay, and why are we here? And he understood. He was like, because I am doing something I'm not supposed to be doing. And I was like, and what happens when that happens? And he was like, well, I could probably fall and get hurt. And I was like, exactly. There's a consequence to the action that you're putting into. And for like the speeding with, uh, and I've noticed that like when I'm speeding and I get pulled over, it's a lot of the times God has let me know multiple times, Kanisha, you need to slow down. It doesn't matter if I'm in my car or if I'm in life or if I'm doing something and I'm choosing to do life at hundred miles per hour. And God has given me multiple warnings and red flags girlfriend you need to slow down and I have not the discipline comes in through a different authority for me to physically see and be with and so um, I had to really acknowledge that a lot of the times when this discipline comes through it's because I've chosen to ignore the the signs or God speaking to me um, before the discipline even had to come. Like I had a few opportunities before the discipline even got there. Um, and so I've had to really um, hone in on those and be able to really help my children see like, hey, you know, this is something we're not supposed to be doing. You have a choice here. And because I've chosen to communicate that instead of going straight to like punishment, like, all right, I'm just gonna spank your bottom because you didn't hear me the first time. Um, it really gives my children the opportunity for a safe environment to learn and expand and to ask questions um, and to really uh, understand why they're not supposed to be doing whatever it is that they're not supposed to be doing. And I, I really work at not saying like, that's a good thing or that's a bad thing. It's like if you do this, this has consequences and these are what the consequences can be. And so for them to understand that um, discipline and the boundaries have gotten so clear that like uh, a lot of the times when they make a choice uh, to do something like that, it's usually being reflected in the choice that I'm making. And so there's a, there's a lot of love that's being um, given given taking because they're showing me where I'm still making that choice and a lot of times when I've chosen to make a new choice it's reflected in my household <laughs> so um really being able to just uh be very present with yourself slow down and if it something doesn't feel good or it feels off that's what we got to do then our work I love what you're saying um I I wanted to like also mention like this um false belief that people who who like serve discipline like think they get from it sometimes i think like people think oh if i discipline you i get power i get authority i get you know whatever it is um that you think you get from doing that action the the truth is is that you know your power your authority your divinity comes from God. It, it doesn't come from you disciplining another. You disciplining another is just you sharing the love, right? Like it's just you like receiving God and what God is helping you help your brother with, right? Um, and so um, I think that recognizing, I, I really, I believe that like if everyone were to just recognize their own power, um, there wouldn't be this feeling of like, oh, well, uh, if my brother disciplines me, I feel powerless. If I discipline, give the discipline, I'm powerful. Then that would really take away this concept that we have around abuse and misuse of power because we would just understand like everyone's powerful and see the truth of what discipline is, which is like, we're all ascending and we're all teaching each other how to ascend and how to claim our divinity, right? And so there's something to that. And I really think it'd be, you know, I'm like actually getting really passionate about like, what the truth of police officers should be because it sounds like to me from what you said about your children 
if police officers even were to just heal collectively as a, as a force, like in their city or their town and just like heal what their community is showing them, you know, what their behavior, the, this, the behavior of the community, just heal that, right? That they might not have those kinds of problems anymore. And that would be the best way to like keep their community safe. Like, it's almost like, um, you know, and, and then they would serve the discipline obviously, but then also heal whatever the discipline they served was within themselves and heal for their community. Like there's something to that, that I think is really cool. And is like, I, I could see being a future of like a, of a police force that is of heaven, right? Yeah. I really like the parallel that is being made between um, police officers and authority and and parenting because like what I can say um, from my experience with my mother, for example, and from ex experience with uh, like Caribbean parents is like they want to be respected. And sometimes when my mother would try to discipline me, it was like she would put on an armor <laughs> before going to, to speak with me. And, and often when she would put on an armor, like figuratively, of course, um, it wouldn't allow for us to have communication. Like when I was a child, for example, I wouldn't understand because I wasn't allowed to ask questions about why I did something wrong. And if I asked questions, it was often seen as disrespectful because she would feel like I wouldn't let her speak. So she would try to assert, assert her power that way. And I would feel helpless because I couldn't understand. And I feel there's something there that could help the police officers. Like, of course, you're not going to go to work like, without your uniform, but um, what is it that in modern society we need, like um, in people like pulling on an, an armor and, and using things that um, feels like they are powerful to ego, but actually are not, and are just like provoking a lot of um, tension and misunderstanding. Um, I think there is something, uh, as you said, um, we could go deeper there, like so much deeper. And it's really helping me um, like heal and understand like that the relationship that we have with police officers is often something that we already have um, in our communities, but in different ways. And this is even more powerful to, to realize that it's not just um, white people against Black people and police officers against other people. Like um, it's also sometimes misunderstandings with your families and and your friends and just not knowing how to use uh, power in your daily life. And yeah, this is really healing. And I wanted to say something else, but I forgot. Well. Yeah, I think what, I, I feel like what you were speaking to was that energy of creating barriers by putting on the armor or putting on the aggression or putting on the uniform. So automatically, what would have been a space for communication is almost blocked. And that is why when the discipline then happens, 
it feels like punishment because automatically, even if you're talking, because there's an inadvertent barrier there already, you can't see, you can't feel and see past it. It's like the minute you know somebody's got a shield, it's like, okay, stay away. This is dangerous. This is bad. This may hurt me. Yet this, the shield may just be, it's just representative of the fact that this person took the time to learn to be a guardian of society in some way or another. We don't see that part. We only see the negative connotation associated with that uniform or that shield or that badge or that title. And so that is part of the misaligned belief that when I get the title, I become bad. I automatically become bad. And yet the title does not change, shouldn't change the love at the core, which is kind of what we're teaching everybody with unionism and ascension is to kind of come back to the love at the core. And even that love at the core means that you're sometimes going to need to discipline somebody. And sometimes you're going to need to set a boundary. And sometimes you're going to need to let go of things. And sometimes you're actually going to need to even walk away from things. Hmm. So the card that we have is humility. <laughs> Ah. <laughs> you have developed the loving awareness that you and everyone else are the same but on different paths. Sounds like that's the way you disarm people is through humility. Yeah, and it works every single time as well. So one of the things that, I, that, that was taught to me very early in my working career was that you actually catch more flies with honey. <laughs> you know, and the analogy is quite strange, but it's very true. Because the sweet is what's going to attract. It's not the clash. It's the, right, let me take a step back and understand your perspective. Because it's very likely that if I choose to understand your perspective, you will choose to understand mine. I love that. And you know what's so funny is like, I'm brought back to the story of the guy, and I think I might've said this on another BLM before, but there was a guy who was like a professor at a university in, I don't know, Alabama or something. And um, he was black and he approached a bunch of KKK people and had a dialogue with them and just said, I just wanna learn like what you think and what, how you feel and um, understand it. And in that they then listened to him and they had a dialogue that went both ways. And he got like a lot of people out of the KKK, one in which is now the um, God, godfather of his child yeah so like you know there like there's something really important about the dialogue and then just have the humility to just start the dialogue even if it's someone who you you know you you think you hate or there's a hate there um that's what unionism is it's 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 coming to the table and and um dialoguing and having the humility to just understand your brother Mm -hmm. absolutely you know i think like as i fill into it i've never i've had interactions with officers but there's never been a time where i've ever felt unsafe because i knew that there was um just a natural like level of respect like i'm, I'm gonna respect the fact that you need to talk to me and the fact that i've always um come from a place of a level of respect, I've always been met with that respect. There's never been a time I've been disrespected by a cop. I've actually come across a lot of kind cops. A lot of cops are like, hey, like this is what's going on. Like, I really don't wanna have to give you a ticket. But however, 
this is what happened. And like, I, I have to respect the rules here. And when I think about it too, and if we go back to the speeding, there's been times where I've been mad about like how I had to get a speeding ticket, but God protects us all. And at that time, I probably was doing something I wasn't supposed to be doing. And my consequences could have harmed another because I was in a rush and I was trying to get somewhere because I was all about me at that point. And God is going to protect all of his children in the way that he can. And that might mean that Kanisha needs a speeding ticket to slow down <laughs> and learn her lesson. And so, um, yeah, like I, for a while, I was really triggered at like everyone being so angry at all police officers, but it's like all people being mad at all black people because of one black person's mistake. And it's like, I can't be mad at all officers because some officers choose to abuse their power and authority. That does not mean that every single one of them is gonna choose the same thing. And I know we got into the conversation of like, well, if another officer knows and doesn't say anything, they're in the wrong too. I do get that. However, um, that is where discipline and then for them would come in like, this is the consequences of you not standing in your truth and owning your power and shining light on a place that you know does not feel good and isn't in alignment with love. And so having compassion for those officers um, and really uh, choosing to release judgment and always choosing to come from a place of peace like our true power is being able to recognize it and always choosing love and peace instead of matching their energy. I agree with that. Similar to you, I've never had an experience in that realm. So yeah, I relate to that. Yeah. Our next card is discernment. You are developing the skills to distinguish love from fear and truth from illusion. I love that. One important thing I've also learned recently about like dealing with power and everything is like trusting yourself and like trusting like your intuition like, is this person abusing? Is this person disciplining? And, um, like, you have the power to discern that. And, like, you, like, and you have the power to discern if you're doing that, too. So, yeah. That's what I'm learning. And it's very helpful. Just trust yourself. Yeah, and the last thing that I want to add to that is that I realized that um, trusting your intuition and like your power is not about outsmarting someone or being right in the end it's just about God and maybe you had a piece of truth and maybe he had like 20% of the truth and it's okay it's not about who is right or who is wrong it's it's about how we get to peace and how we show the way by being peaceful ourselves. Yeah, that's awesome. Thank you, everybody. We have just about reached our hour in the, and I, I, I feel it almost feels like to me, like we just started chatting. <laughs> I feel like this has been the fastest conversation yet. <laughs> So yeah, thank you to everybody for your participation today and to everybody that's watched um, and gone along with us on this hour. Um, yeah, our BLM conversation happens every week. So please feel to, free to like and subscribe to our YouTube Church of Union channel. You'll find all our BLM conversations there. Um, all the past recordings also. Please feel free to share any thoughts and insights and even any questions that you think could turn into a good topic to go forward with. So yeah, thank you all for your participation and thank you for everybody that has been with us in the space for today.